Did you know that you can browse the internet right from within your Linux terminal? Well, you absolutely can, and that's what I'm going to show you guys in today's video. In particular, I'm going to show you the Lynx 2 web browser, as well as W3M. Those are two methods that you can use to browse the internet from within your terminal, and this could be an effective way to browse how-to pages, maybe even check the Arch Wiki, which I will be showing you how to do. It's very useful to browse the internet from within your terminal, and that's exactly what you're going to learn how to do in today's video. Now, before we get to that though, I need to take a moment and mention the sponsor for today's video. If you're looking for a cloud provider that's affordable, flexible, and reliable, then look no further than Akamai Connected Cloud. With Akamai's cloud platform, you can spin up Linux servers quickly, and the platform contains all the features you'll need to deploy full-featured solutions. And using the marketplace, you could easily deploy applications such as NextCloud, Rocket Chat, Mastodon, WordPress, Pi-hole, Plex, Jenkins, and many more. In fact, there's over 100 applications available in the marketplace. If you want to set up a custom Linux instance, you could do that too. All the popular Linux distributions are available on the platform, including, but not limited to, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, and many others. In fact, even Arch Linux is available. So check out Akamai Connected Cloud with the URL that you see on the screen right now, which will do two things. First, it'll help support this channel, which I'll really appreciate. And it'll also get you $100 in starter credit to check out the platform. And thank you yet again to Akamai for sponsoring this video. Now with all that out of the way, let's dive into browsing the internet from within your Linux terminal. All right, so let's get started. The first web browser that you could run in your terminal that I'm going to show you is called Lynx2. So the first thing I'm going to do is install it. So what I'll do is run sudo apt update to refresh my package repository index in the case of Debian, Ubuntu, and related distributions. So I'll press enter on that. I'll type in my super secret password. And now that that's done, what I should be able to do is install Lynx2. And to do that, I'll run sudo apt install, and then the name of the package is Lynx2, just like that. If you are using a distribution other than Debian, like me, or other than Ubuntu, then what you could do is just use your distribution's package manager to install this package. Anyway, I'll press enter to install this browser right now. Enter to confirm. And it's done. If I didn't know any better, I would say that's one of the fastest browser installations I've ever performed. The thing is, Lynx 2 is not a huge package, so it does install fairly quickly. But now that it's installed, how exactly do you use it? Well, let's take a look at that right now. So first, we'll type Lynx 2, and then we type the URL of a website that we want to visit. For example, I could type learnlinux.tv, the official website for this channel. Let's see what that looks like in a terminal. Now, as you can see, there's really not a whole lot going on here. In fact, all we have is the text for the web page. I could use the up and down arrows to scroll through various things here. So I could just hold the down arrow and just keep going through to read various things on this website. So again, as you can see, it's stripped of all images, but the text is there, which is pretty cool. So if you wanted to look something up, you can certainly do that. If you wanted to click on a link, for example, what you could do is scroll down to that link and then press enter, which is equivalent to clicking on a link. So now I'm at the about page for my website, as you can see, and you could also use page up and page down to scroll through the web page faster if you want to, you know, go through it quicker. But as you can see, links to is fairly effective. But what if you wanted to visit a different website? I don't see an address bar here, do you? So how do you go about changing which website you are viewing with links to? Well, one way you could do that is by pressing letter G. And once you do, it asks you for a new URL. Let's say, for example, you're setting up an Arch Linux system and you want to consult the Arch Wiki. That's a very popular use case for a terminal-based web browser. So what I'll do is type wiki.archlinux.org and let's go to that website right now. And here we are at the Arch Wiki. So let's say, for example, I wanted to, I don't know, set up my NVIDIA GPU. That would be a use case that you might use something like this for. 
because if I'm not able to get a desktop environment installed or at least a graphical user interface at all, it might be because my video driver needs to be installed. But how do I look that up if I don't even have access to a proper web browser? Well, since this is a proper web browser, even though we don't see all the elements we would normally see, we can still search for something. All I have to do is arrow down to the text box right here for typing in a search query. And what I'll do is type in video. I'll press enter. That takes me to the search button. I'll press enter again. And now what I can do is look through the search results. Here we have page title matches. So I've highlighted the NVIDIA heading, I'll press enter. And that takes me to the NVIDIA section of the ArchWiki. So I can scroll through here and get some advice for how to set up NVIDIA. And as you can see, I'm able to do this without even having access to a graphical web browser. Right here in the terminal, I can find the information that I need, and that's pretty cool. And some people might think the lack of graphics is a good thing, because nowadays you could barely ever read an article online without some sort of popover interrupting the experience. It's a lot harder to have a popover here in a terminal web browser. So in some ways, this could be a reading mode of sorts to cut out all the unnecessary things and leave just the text. So for some use cases, you might even prefer this. But how do you go back? Normally a web browser has a back button, but I don't see a back button here. So how do I go back to the previous page? Well, that's easy actually. All you have to do is press the left arrow and that's equivalent to the back button. And similar to that, I could press the right arrow and that brings me back to the page that I was just on. Another tip that I'll give you is you could press S to open a bookmark manager, as you can see here. And what you could do is add a new bookmark. So if I wanted to bookmark Learn Linux TV, I could just highlight add. I just use the right arrow to highlight that button there. I'll press enter. And what I'm going to do is just back this out. It's using the information for the web page that I'm currently attached to here. So I'll add a bookmark. Let's erase this URL. We'll change the name. And then I'll press tab to go to the OK button. If I wanted to cancel, I could press the right arrow to highlight that, but I do want to save this bookmark. So I'll make sure OK is highlighted here and I'll press enter. And now Learn Linux TV has been bookmarked here in links too. To close the menu, I just go over here to close and press enter. And then when I'm done using the browser, I could press letter Q on the keyboard and then confirm with yes that I want to exit this particular browser and I'm back to the command line and I'm ready to look at the second browser. Now the next web browser that I'm going to show you guys isn't actually a web browser, although it is able to show you web pages in your terminal, which is why I'm including it in this video. And the application that I'm referring to is W3M. To install this, what I'll do is run sudo apt install. I want to install W3M and also w3m-img. So those two packages are the ones that I'll install. Be sure to check your distribution's package manager for the package names on your distro if you're not using Debian or Ubuntu. Anyway, I'll press enter, and then I'll press enter again to confirm. And just like with links two, that was pretty quick. Now I mentioned that w3m isn't technically a web browser, so what is it? Well, it's a pager that allows you to scroll through text and it's also able to fetch web pages. So let's see an example of that right now. To view a web page with W3M, all we have to do is type W3M. And then we could type a URL. So again, I'll type learnlinux.tv and then I'll press enter. As you can see, again, we have the Learn Linux TV site here in my terminal window. The coloration is different as you can see. Just like with links two, I could press page up and page down to scroll through the content on this web page. And also similar to links two, what I can do is highlight a link or put my cursor on top of a link and press enter to visit that link. But other than that, the remaining keyboard shortcuts are a bit different with W3M when compared to links two. If you recall, for example, the left arrow in links two brings you back a page but we use a different keyboard shortcut for that when it comes to W3M. So to go back, what I could do is hold shift and press letter B. And what that'll do is take me back to the previous page, as you can see. Now there's some additional functionality that I think is really cool. 
For example, we can have tabs inside our terminal window, which is really cool for a text-based web browser because tabs are something that you would probably think are reserved for a graphical web browser, but here in W3M, we have access to tabs. To create a tab, what you do is you hold Shift and press T, and what you can see there at the top is the fact that we now have two tabs. If you want to switch between the tabs, what you could do is hold Shift, and then you could press the left curly brace or the right curly brace, and that'll take you to the different tabs. To close a tab, I can hold Control and press Q, and that'll close whichever tab is active when I press that keyboard shortcut. In addition, if I want to go to a different URL, what I can do is hold Shift and press U. So again, if I wanted to view the Arch Wiki, for example, I could type wiki.archlinux.org, press Enter, and then I'm there. Another thing that you can do when it comes to W3M is you can hold Shift and press G, and that'll take you to the very end of the web page. If you want to return to the top of the web page, you just press G without shift and it'll take you back to the top of the page. And when you're done using W3M, you can press Q on your keyboard to bring up the close dialog that you see right here. And then you can confirm that you want to quit the web browser by pressing Y on your keyboard, which will take you back to your terminal. For the next trick that I'm going to show you when it comes to browsing the web within your terminal, I'm going to show you how to view images as well. I mentioned earlier that all of the components are stripped when you use a web browser such as Lynx 2 or W3M, and that is true by default, but there is a way to see graphics as well, and here's how you do it. So going back to Lynx 2, I'll just go ahead and type that in right here. I'm going to use the dash G option, and then just like normal, I'll go ahead and type a URL. I'll use my website as an example yet again, and I'll press enter and watch what happens. Now, the formatting may not look all that great when you use this particular mode of Lynx 2. It's never going to be perfect, but we do have a close enough approximation for what this page looks like. These icons are ginormous, of course. But as I scroll down, you can see the content of the page. Again, it's not going to look exactly the same, but at least you'll see the images as well. So if you're curious how to graphically view web pages from within your terminal, well, that's how you do it. You just use the dash G option with links to, and you'll see the images just like you see right here. And then when you're done, you could close that window and you're back to the command line. As you can see, the Linux terminal is a powerful utility and within it, you could do all kinds of cool things. In today's video, I showed you the process of viewing web pages from within your terminal and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please consider clicking the like button to let YouTube know that you enjoy my content. And I also appreciate you checking out this video. I have a lot more videos coming out very soon. So be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.